This episode is brought to you by Art Materials. The History of Calligraphy During the Bengal Sultanate, by Raihan Shah II. Disclaimer. This article was based on an upcoming textbook named, Sultani Calligraphy of Bengal, Theoretical, by the author Ustads Muhammad Abdur Rahim. The Honorable Chairman of the Bangladesh Calligraphy Institute. As this book is designed for the calligraphy credit course. This whole article contains valuable information that can be modified as per the BCI's standard requirement. Do not copy any historical facts from this article as misuse can occur as well as many things will be changed later anyway. This article is an indispensable part of the subject of art history. Especially from the perspective of Bangladesh. Researchers will be benefited from reading this article as it contains many implementing facts that otherwise could not be found elsewhere. You are welcome to watch this whole video and pay close attention for the utmost betterment. I am Raihan Sani, the Executive Manager of Bangladesh Calligraphy Institute. I thank you happily to enjoy this video. Let's see what is inside. The rich and desirable font styles of angular and curvy kinds were a norm in the states of the Middle East before the Gregorian year 1204 in Bengal. The Kufic font styles of Mashreki, Nishaburi, and Karamati of angular kind were used extensively in the calligraphy, decoration of books as well as the writing of manuscripts. Especially the Kufic font style can be cited in religious architectural constructions. The astonishing use of curvy font styles such as Sulu's, Nask, Rika, Mahakak, Raihani, Diwani, etc. Besides angular kinds in the Middle East can be also seen. The Muslim and Sultani rule was established in northern India through Turkmenistan and Afghanistan. Later. The calligraphic font style of Iranian Nasq was widely used in the writing of the Holy Quran as well as for writing administrative manuscripts. In some cases, there is evidence of a minor presence of Bari style Quran still at that earlier time. Also, Bari style calligraphy and Iranian and Turkish styles of calligraphy can be seen in the buildings of this region of India. The Qutb Minar and the Kuwat al Islam Mosque, Delhi, India. Built by the Sultan Qutb ud Din i Bak are the perfect place that contains remarkable and beautiful examples of architectural calligraphy. The main usage of calligraphy in Egypt, Sudan, and the states of Western Africa is in the manuscripts and architecture. The characteristics and features of the Maghrebi style calligraphy can be declared as almost different from that of the Middle Eastern calligraphy. Under the patronage of the Bari sultans of Egypt, a form of calligraphy can be seen in architecture in which vertical lines stand parallel to each other in an interesting manner. Later, its significant influence can be cited in the Tugra of the Sultanate of Bengal. In 1205, Iktia Uddin Muhammad Bakhtiar Kilji established the Kilji rule by defeating the ruler of Bengal. Balil Sen, and Kilji ruled the land of Bengal until 1227. The formal journey of Arabic and Persian calligraphy began with the establishment of Muslim rule in Bengal. In Bengal, the active patronage of the Kilji sultans can be seen in the extensive applications and presentations of calligraphy in architecture. The endemic variations of Sulu's, Nask, 
Rika, Mahakak, and Nastalik styles were used extensively in architectural calligraphy. It should be noted that Kilji sultans and rulers were mostly of Turkish origin. So the influence of Turkish calligraphy and ornamental design can be seen in the calligraphy of the Kilji period. Bengal was under Turkish rule from 1227 to 1287. The second half of the Kilji rule saw widespread use of the calligraphic font style of Rika under the patronage of rulers of Turkic origin. During this period, architectural calligraphy in Bengal saw the introduction and of the Rika style as well as the Nasq, Sulus, and Mahakak styles, and the Nasq al Maidani style was used in the current coins. As a result of Bugra Khan's rise to power in Lakhnauti in 1281, the Balbani rule was established in Bengal. The Balbani rule lasted till 1300 in Bengal. During the reign of the Balbani, the traditional style of calligraphy was maintained in coins and inscriptions. From 1301 to 1338, the Tuflaki and Feroz Shahi periods saw widespread use of Nasq, Sulus, and Rika styles in inscriptions and coins in Bengal. During the reign of Sultan Shamsuddin Firoz Shah, the relationship of the Muslim rulers of the Middle East with the Bengal Sultanate was established and strengthened. And coinage was introduced in Bengal in the name of the Abbasid Caliph Mutazm Billah of Baghdad. The engraved calligraphy of this period was vivid and eye-catching and it proves the presence of skilled professional calligraphers in Bengal at that time. Before the establishment of Ilyas Shahi rule in the whole of Bengal, Sultan Fakhruddin Mubarak Shah seized power in Sanagaon in 1338 AD and declared independence. From his period, Bengal officially entered the independent Sultanate period. During this time, the great development of calligraphy was achieved. Farkruddin Mubarak Shah seized power and quickly issued coins in his own name and built various developmental structures. Inscriptions with beautiful calligraphy are placed on these structures. From the time of Farkruddin Mubarak Shah, the use of the calligraphic font style of Mahakak along with Sulus and Nasq styles began fully. The calligraphy of that time was rich in art. After the death of Sultan Farkruddin Mubarak Shah, Sultan Shamsuddin Ilyas Shah of Lakhnauti defeated and killed the son of Farkruddin Mubarak Shah named Sultan Iqtiruddin Ghazi Shah and established Ilyas Shahi rule in the whole of Bengal. From his period, the highest appreciation of calligraphy can be observed in Bengal such as the wholesome presence of inscriptions in mosques, madrasha, kanka, pools, culverts, digas, or lakes, palaces, inns, and other structures. In these inscriptions, the use of Arabic calligraphic styles of Sulus, Mahakak, Rika, Tauchi, Bari al-Bangali, and Tugra forms was widely practiced. From his time, the styles of Bari al Bengali Nasq, Sulus, Mahakak and Rika, as well as Nasq, Sulus, Mahakak and Rika al Maidani, styles began to be used in royal copies of the Holy Quran. The Sultan Sikandar Shah was the second Sultan of the Ilyas Shahi dynasty. He built the largest mosque in South Asia and the second largest in the world in Pandua or present day Mulda in West Bengal. Known by the name, Adina Mosque, modeled after the Umayyad Mosque in Syria. Arabic calligraphy and Islamic designs were extensively carved in this mosque. Adina Mosque is by far the greatest achievement of the Ilyas Shahi period. Various calligraphic font styles were carved here, including the Sulus al Bengali, Mahakak, Rika, and Bari al Bengali styles. After defeating Ilyas Shahi Sultan Alaruddin Shah I, a Hindu Brahmin named Raja Ganesha of the Bachuria, a Zamandar, or a landlord seized power in Bengal in 1415. During his period, 
Instead of Arabic calligraphy, coins were introduced in Bengali script in the language of Sanskrit, which undermined the wonderful nature and attractive characteristics of earlier Sultani calligraphy. King Ganesha began to suppress his opponents and mainly the Muslims with great torture and oppression and in just three years of his two-term rule. Raja Ganesha Narayan took the title of Danuj Mardan Dev, or Demon Slayer, and killed countless unarmed innocent Muslims in Bengal. Then when his opponents took refuge in Sheikh Nur Kuta Balam, he urged Sultan Ibrahim Shaki of Jaunpur to invade Bengal and oust Ganesha. After Ibrahim Shaki invaded Bengal, Nur Kuta Balam asked King Ganesha to convert to Islam. King Ganesha's son Yadanarian converted to Islam and took the throne as Jalaluddin Muhammad Shah and reintroduced coins inscribed in Arabic calligraphy in his own name. After the retreat of Jaunpur's army, King Ganesha replaced his son and regained the kingdom himself. But soon, Sultan Jalaluddin Muhammad Shah killed Raja Ganesha and retook the kingdom and the Sultanate was restored in Bengal again. After defeating Sultan Jalaluddin Fatah Shah in 1487, Sultan Barbak Shah started the Abyssinian rule in Bengal and this Abyssinian reign lasted until 1493. During this period, inscriptions were placed on mosque, madrasha, shrines, towers, and minaret to mark the presence of Bari Tugra, and it was heavily impacted by the Egyptian Bari style. The famous achievement of this time was the Feroz Manar of Gouda, built by Sultan Saifuddin Feroz Shah, which was modelled on the Qutb Manar of Delhi, India. Alaruddin Hussain Shah defeated Sultan Shamsuddin Muzaffar Shah in 1493 and established the Hussein Shahi rule in Bengal. During his period, a revolution in architecture was achieved in Bengal. During this time, mosques, tombs, arches, forts, pools, culverts, and all developmental structures were built. Sultan Alaeddin Hussein Shah started the construction of Barasona Mosque in Gouda. But his son Sultan Nasiruddin Nusrat Shah completed the construction of the mosque as he could not. Arabic calligraphy and Islamic designs were extensively carved in this mosque. Barasona Mosque was named for the shining golden lining of its dome and is the greatest achievement of the Hussein Shahi period. Various styles of calligraphy were carved here, including the Sulus, Mahakak, Rika, and Bari al-Bengali. Also notable are the Chotu Sona Mosque in modern-day Chapinawabganj, built by Wali Muhammad during the reign of Sultan Alaeddin Hussein Shah, and the Bagar Mosque in Bagar of Rishahi during the reign of Sultan Nasiruddin Nusrat Shah. Arabic calligraphy is inscribed in many graves, especially near the Chotu Sona Mosque. In 1538 AD, Shir Khan captured Gouda and from then on, the independent Sultanate of Bengal passed into the hands of the Afghans, which lasted until 1576 as well as marking the end of the Bengal Sultanate. During this period, Afghans continued to develop mosques, madrasha, religious structures, and all kinds of architecture. Extensive use of the Tugra form and the calligraphic font style of Bari al-Bengali are observed in all these architectures. Needless to say, the decline of the independent Sultanate of Bengal started during the period of the fourth Sultan Nazir Uddin Mahmud Shah of the Ilyas Shahi dynasty which further deteriorated during this Afghan period. The excellence of Arabic calligraphy began to fade away during the middle part of the Afghan rule in Bengal. After that, even though Persian calligraphy was secondary to none in this situation, in the Mughal period, Persian was completely adopted instead of Arabic as the outcome. The best style of the calligraphy of this country's Sultanate period 
The Bari al Bengali and other styles, which originally dominated Arabic calligraphy, lost its way. Naturally, as the Mughal rulers were of Iranian and Mughal or Mongol origin, the independent Sultanate period of Bengal came to the end with the establishment of the Mughal period. 